stolen by Angelen Lestadios. Silence in the snow. The snow fell gently over the Sami village, casting a serene blanket of white across the landscape. In the heart of this peaceful setting, Elsa stood motionless, her eyes fixed on the ground where her beloved reindeer, Nastigalu, lay lifeless. The shock of the sight rendered her silent, a silence born not of choice but of a deep-seated fear that clenched her heart. Elsa clutched the earpiece of Nastigalu, a beautifully crafted symbol of ownership and a cherished heirloom passed down through her family, symbolizing the deep bond between the reindeer and its keeper. This earpiece, now in her trembling hands, was a poignant reminder of the connection she had lost. Her father, a tall man with lines of worry etched into his face, approached her cautiously. Elsa, my dear, what happened here, he asked, his voice a mix of concern and the need for truth. Elsa's lips parted, but no words came out. She simply shook her head. Her brother Matthias watched from a distance, his fists clenched in anger and helplessness. Memories of racing across the frozen fields with Nastigalu flashed through his mind, sharpening the sting of his current helplessness and fueling his frustration. He wanted to scream, to do something, but he felt paralyzed, trapped in a situation where action seemed impossible. The silence was eventually broken by the arrival of two police officers, their faces stern yet compassionate, their uniforms crisp against the soft snow. Elza's father spoke with the officers, his voice firm. We need someone who can talk to her gently, someone who understands children, he said, glancing back at Elsa with a pained expression. As the officers nodded and one stepped forward, Elsa's father turned to her. Elsa, you need to tell them what you saw. It's important, he urged softly. Elsa looked up, her blue eyes swimming with unshed tears. I... I can't, she whispered, the first word she had spoken since the discovery. Matthias stepped forward, his voice harsh with emotion. Why won't you speak? They need to know what happened to Nastigalu. Elsa flinched at his tone, and their father placed a calming hand on Matthias' shoulder. She scared Matthias. We need to be patient. The police officer knelt in front of Elsa, offering a gentle smile. It's okay, Elsa. You're not in trouble. We just want to help your reindeer. Elsa's gaze flickered between the officer and her father, the weight of honesty heavy on her shoulders. With a shaky breath, she began to recount the events of the morning, her voice barely above a whisper. As she spoke, the family's tension eased slightly. But the questions remained. Who would harm Nastigalu? And why? The answers were buried deep in the snow, waiting to be uncovered, just like the truth that Elsa held within her. The chapter of silence was closing, and a quest for truth was about to begin. The Quest for Truth Elsa sat on the edge of her bed, her fingers tracing the edges of a worn leather folder, an old case file her mother, once a police officer, had kept. The need for truth propelled her forward, and she opened the folder to spread out the documents across her lap. Police reports detailed incidents eerily similar to what had happened to her reindeer, Nastigalu, dot, dot, dot. Her father's voice broke the silence. Elza, are you all right? It's late. I found something, Dad. Elsa whispered, handing him the first report. It's not just Nastigalu. There have been others. Taking the report, her father's expression turned grave. This is terrible, Elsa. We should have known. Elsa nodded, a mix of determination and fear in her heart. She had always hesitated to involve the police, but now the pattern was too clear to ignore. We'll they'll take this to the police first thing in the morning her father declared. They need to see the connection. Walking into the police station the next day, Elsa felt the gravity of their discovery. Officer Sivert greeted them warmly. Elsa, Mr. Hagen, what can I do for you? Elsa, bolstered by her father's presence, laid the folder on Sivert's desk. 
Sir, these reports show a pattern of attacks on reindeer. It's not just random, it's happening to others too. Sivert's concern was evident as he examined the documents. We'll investigate this immediately, he promised. Leaving the station, Elsa felt the first stirrings of hope. Her father's pride and her courage warmed her. It's not over, Dad, but now maybe something will change. Traditions and Tragedy Elsa stood in the heart of the Sami village, the setting sun casting a warm glow on her gakti. The eyes of the village were upon her, a mix of admiration and curiosity. Are you sure you want to do this, Elsa? Matthias asked, his voice tinged with concern. It's our way, Matthias. The Gakti is who we are. Elsa replied without pausing her work. Matthias nodded, his thoughts clouded by the recent events that had shaken their community. I just wish things could be different, he said softly. Leaves for now, Elsa inquired, looking up from her task. Maybe if the police had listened, if they had cared about Nasta Gallo. We can't change how others act, but we can honor Nasta Gallo in our own way, Elsa said, her hands momentarily still. The next day, the village convened for the calf marking ceremony, an ancient tradition where young reindeer are marked to signify their growth and connection to the community. Elsa led the young reindeer to the circle's center, her gakti reflecting the sunlight. She made the traditional cut in the calf's ear, symbolizing its bond to the village while respecting its autonomy. Matthias watched, the weight of his secrets pressing upon him. He had been involved in a tragic incident that led to a reindeer's death, an event that now haunted him with guilt and remorse. Later at the nursing home, Elsa and Matthias visited their grandmother, Aku. The calf marking went well, Elsa said, trying to lift Aku's spirits. Aku smiled weakly. You're keeping our traditions alive. That's good. Matthias shifted uncomfortably, the guilt gnawing at him. Aku, there's something I need to tell you. He started, but Elsa gave him a sharp look. Not now, Matthias. Let's just be here with Aku. That night, as the village slept, Elsa sat by the fire. The gakti draped over her shoulders. She thought of Nastigalu and the police's indifference. A tear slid down her cheek, but she wiped it away fiercely, her spirit unbroken. Matthias watched her from the shadows, his resolve strengthening. We will find a way, he whispered to himself. Together. Kiun. End of Simon. Together. A beacon in the dark. Elza stood in the middle of the bustling Jock Mock Market, the vibrant colors of her gakti reflecting the midday sun. The air was filled with the sounds of Sammy Joik and the scent of smoked reindeer meat. She watched with pride as tourists admired the craft stalls, their cameras capturing the beauty of her culture. Her brother Matthias, a respected figure in the community, watched the reindeer races from a distance. His presence a silent support to the young Sami riders showcasing their skills. Elsa's heart swelled with pride for Nastigalo, and she found solace in the laughter and cheers of her community. Look at them, Matthias, she said, her eyes following a young rider. They're the future. We need to ensure our traditions survive for them. Matthias's gaze was somber, reflecting the weight of recent events. How can we protect them when our own are being threatened, he asked, his concern evident. Elsa's resolve was clear. We ensure the world knows what's happening here. As they walked through the market, Elsa admired a duaji stall, where the intricate patterns on the handicraft spoke of a history that refused to be silenced. Anastina, the craftswoman, joined her, sharing stories woven into each creation. Elza and Matthias discussed the challenges facing their community with Anastina, who listened intently. I've spoken to Lavisa Wickberg, Elsa mentioned. She understands the gravity of the situation. Matthias nodded, his determination matching Elsa's. It's about justice for all the reindeer herders, he agreed. 
The siblings left the market with a renewed sense of purpose. They knew the road ahead would be fraught with challenges, but as they looked back at the market, alive with the spirit of their people, they felt a beacon of hope guiding them through the dark. They were ready to face whatever came their way, together. The Indifferent Guardians Elsa stood resolute in the heart of the Sami village, her gaze fixed on the empty expanse where reindeer once grazed. The snow, marred by recent violence, served as a stark reminder of the threat looming over her community. With a determined breath that misted in the frigid air, she addressed the gathered villagers, We must act. The police dismiss our concerns, but we will not be overlooked. Nods of agreement passed through the crowd, and Matthias, Elsa's brother, watched her with a blend of pride and worry. Our reindeer are the essence of our culture, our identity, Elsa proclaimed. We will not stand idly by while they are taken from us. An elder, his face a map of winter's past, stepped forward. Elsa, we are a quiet people. How can we stand against such apathy? We will amplify our voice, Elsa replied, her determination clear. The world will learn of our struggle. Matthias moved closer, his voice tinged with concern. You're defying age-old norms, Elsa. Are you prepared for what follows? Elsa's hand found his arm, her eyes alight with an inner fire. Yes, for our ancestors, for our future, for us all. Our silence has only brought grief. Now we act. The narrative then shifts to a week later, with Elsa leading a peaceful demonstration outside the police station. The vibrant hues of traditional Sami attire contrasting the building's drab facade. Elsa's sign, justice for our reindeer, soared above the crowd. Inside, the police chief observed the scene, his features betraying nothing. To his deputy, he voiced his unease. They're mere herders. Why this uproar? They're anguished by the killing, seeking more from us, the deputy explained. The chief's scoff carried his dismissal. We have graver crimes to address. This is life here. Yet outside, Elza's voice rang clear. Our way of life deserves respect, demands action. The day progressed and the villagers' chants filled the air, testament to their resilience. Elza's movement had ignited, and though the path ahead was fraught with uncertainty, her spirit remained unquenchable. The indifferent guardians would have to heed the Sami's call. To enrich the narrative, a new character, Anja, a young Sami woman adept in the ancient art of Joik, joined the protest. Her song, a haunting melody dedicated to the reindeer, stirred the hearts of all present, weaving a powerful bond between the community and their cherished traditions. Meanwhile, the police chief, a man torn between duty and empathy, grappled with limited resources and mounting pressures. His role demanded he prioritize, yet the sight of the Sami's peaceful yet fervent plea stirred something within him. The chapter also delves into the daily life of the Sami, showcasing their morning ritual of herding reindeer from the forest to the open tundra. The rhythmic sound of clicking hooves and the soft calls of the herders painted a vivid picture of a people inextricably linked to these majestic creatures, a daily dance of harmony and survival. The scene served as a poignant reminder of what was at stake for Elsa and her people. The Weight of Guilt Elsa sat on the edge of her bed, her gaze fixed on the wall, as the weight of recent events pressed heavily on her conscience. The room was silent, save for the occasional creak of the wooden house, a reminder of the harsh winter outside. She pondered the community's struggles and her role in them, feeling the burden of unspoken truths. Are you okay, Elsa? Her mother's voice pierced the silence, warm yet filled with worry. Elsa turned, offering a weary smile. I'm fine, Mum. Just tired, she replied, her voice betraying the lie. Her mother joined her, a reassuring presence. You know you can talk to me, right? Whatever it is, we'll get through it together. Elsa nodded, the falsehood twisting in her gut. She couldn't confide in her mother about the community's tensions or the fear that haunted her thoughts. In the adjoining room, Matthias feigned sleep 
the low murmur of his parents' concerned voices a constant backdrop. He felt ensnared by his own emotions, unable to voice the chaos within. Elsa's soft knock on the door broke the silence. Matthias, are you awake? He remained still, and she exhaled, sitting beside him. I know you're not asleep. We need to talk. Matthias opened his eyes, revealing the toll of his inner battle. What's there to discuss? Everything's a mess, Elsa. Grasping his hand, Elsa's resolve wavered. We can't continue like this. We have to confront our reality. The community, our family, we're united in this. Matthias sat up, his gaze a blend of respect and apprehension. But what if I'm not up to it, Elsa? What if I'm too weak? You're stronger than you believe, Elsa affirmed. And I'll always be here for you. Their exchange was halted by a knock. Officers Henriksen and Lundblad stood at the door, their expressions solemn. Elsa, Matthias, we have some questions for you, Henriksen announced. Elsa rose, her pulse quickening. We're ready to share what we know. As the officers stepped inside, Elsa and Matthias shared a look. A silent vow to support each other through the challenges ahead. Together, they braced themselves to confront the repercussions of their actions, determined to navigate the encroaching darkness. The siblings faced their fears and the consequences head-on, resolved to find light amidst the shadows. The Plea for Life Elsa entered the room and sat quietly beside Matthias. We've both made mistakes, she said simply. Remember Aku's words about the winter and the spring. Let's look forward to that. Matthias met her gaze, a silent understanding passing between them. I'll try, he replied. With a nod, Elsa stood, offering her hand to her brother. Together, they left the room, ready to embrace whatever lay ahead. Resonating Stories Elsa sat at the old wooden desk, the one that had belonged to her Akku, and spread out the pages of her manuscript. The room was quiet except for the soft crackling of the fire. She could feel the weight of her family's history in the walls around her, and it gave her strength. Are you sure about this? Matthias asked, leaning against the doorframe with a concerned look. Elsa nodded, her eyes never leaving the pages. It's time our story was told. Matthias walked over and sat beside her, his gaze following her pen as it danced across the paper. But what about the risks? What if people don't understand? They will, Elsa said firmly, because you'll help me make sure of it. Together they pored over the manuscript, Elsa's words painting a vivid picture of their lives and their struggles. They laughed and cried, remembering the moments of joy and pain. And what about the day we gathered outside the police station? Matthias asked, his voice hesitant. Will you include that? Elsa paused, her heart heavy with the memory. Yes, it was the day we stood up for ourselves, for our rights, for all the reindeer. It's a day that changed us. The manuscript grew, each page a testament to their resilience. Elsa's voice became stronger with each word, her story a bridge between the past and the future. As the final words were written, Matthias took the pages gently from her hands. We'll make sure the world hears our voice, he promised. Elsa watched as her brother gathered the pages, her heart full of hope. The story of their lives, of their beloved community, and of their fight for justice would soon resonate with others. And in that moment, Elsa knew that no matter what the future held, their stories would live on, echoing through the ages, like the enduring song of the Sami people. <laughs>